Hello once again, I'm Dr. Amir Fassad, and I am here in a stupidly trendy Williamsburg neighborhood in Brooklyn, with a man I assumed to be Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. But it appears I have been misinformed. The man who just spoke to the United Nations is none other than the commander of the United States Strategic Command, General Kevin Childton. Fooled you, huh, Dr. Fassad? Hi, Mom. Hi, drone fans. And here's to you, Iranian religious leaders with all your silly ass Islamic bombs. Well, first of all, General Charlton, I am sure the people watching this show will want to know what you have done with President Ahmadinejad. He's safe and well taken care of, on a small schooner moored off the coast of Louisiana. You don't mean... Well of course, Dr. Fassett. Those silly Iranians always suspected British Petroleum of committing every crime the CIA hadn't gotten around to committing yet. If we are going to take the trouble to temporarily kidnap him, why not put him to work cleaning that same oil his people are selling to us to fund their nukes? Hey, how did you like that bit about promiscuous women causing earthquakes? Our consultant, Pat Robertson, gave us that idea. When I repeated that in the United Nations, I thought some of those European diplomats were just gonna piss their pants. Well, General Charlton, now that the United States admits it has taken its nuclear arsenal down to 5,000 warheads, why provoke a confrontation with Iran? Who gains, and who loses? Brush my teeth and call me smiley, Dr. Fassad. That's about as silly as asking why we would blow up an oil derrick in the Gulf of Mexico. Weren't you around when we launched the X-37 and HTV-2 Falcon space planes in April? Weren't you around when we announced the conventional global strike weapons last week? Unfortunately, I was on a slow boat from Europe, forced to sail to this country when the Kyrgyz and Thailand rebels blew up the volcano in Iceland. Well jeezy patizy, mister, you have missed all the fireworks. So here's the deal. We knew back in 2003 that Iran was going to make a nuclear bomb sooner or later, so we started designing these space planes that would drop bombs, and not necessarily nuclear bombs, on Tehran in a matter of hours. With an orbital plane, we could use bigger bombs than those little pipskeek predator drones. But then we figured out how to put those planes under robot control. So this here Falcon space plane is like a drone on steroids. See? But wouldn't a space plane launch from a United States air base send a rather clear message? No problem, we launch him from Israel. Or maybe Djibouti. Shake your yaw booty, you know? Gotta love this stuff. So what was the point of going public with global strike weapons? This is like the punchline, dude. We keep a stockpile of Minuteman 3 missiles, and Iran never knows which missile has the nuke, and which has a big old conventional fuel air weapon that will put a dent in Tehran, but not make anyone hate the United States. Anything you can launch, I can launch cleaner, I can launch anything cleaner than you. No you can't. Yes I can. No you can't. Yes I can, yes I can. So I still fail to see the purpose of blowing up the oil rig. Dude, that wasn't strategic command. That was CIA. We told them no one would believe the cover story that Iran was blowing up the oil rig to get even with British Petroleum. But did they listen? No way, Jose. You know what the National Security Agency calls the CIA? Those bastards across the river, or T-Bar. Seems like a good name to me. Why did the cover story get blown? So the CIA's agent in place from Pakistan, Faisal Shahzad, he thinks he's too good to get his feet wet out in the Gulf, so he gets this crazy ass idea to blow up Times Square. As much as I hate the CIA, I have to tell you that was not the CIA's idea. These rogue agents, they're all wackadoodle. Crazy Shahzad couldn't even figure out how to do a suicide bombing right. But I noticed that neither the CIA nor the Strategic Command intervened to stop New York law enforcement from making that impressive arrest on the night of May 3rd. Why would we? 
That little snake Armand Guinea Jad is still in town. We can pin it all on him. In fact, then we don't have to wait for Iran to finish the bomb. We can just send a Falcon plane straight up the Ayatollah's ass next week, courtesy of Federal Express. But what about collateral damage from the oil spill, General Childton? Look, son, the long-term mission of Global Strike Weapons is to melt the North Pole ice cap, so we can drill for oil at the pole and end our reliance on the Persian Gulf. Think of it, Polar Express cruise lines going straight from Barrow, Alaska to northern Siberia. Why, we could even have Sarah Palin on our maiden voyage saying drill baby drill as we sail off into perpetual sunset. Are there any potential holdups in your plans for world domination? You know, there's been these pesky protesters in New York all week, hollering no nukes and all that crap. We agree, no nukes, let's go kick ass conventional. But on the 9th of May, there's those dangerous folks from the global network against weapons and nuclear power in space, all coming to New York City. We have to keep an eye on those folks. They went and made a full-color brochure about me and my posse this week, and the next thing you know, they'll be getting people to say that General Tilton is trying to go to Iran into a world war. Come on, Dr. Fassad, you know that's only sort of true. So what do you do with the global network stirring up trouble and talking trash? We have plenty of agents in place with sinister plans and things that go boom, Dr. Fassad. Well, this is Dr. Amir Fassad, hoping there is more that stands between us and melted ice caps and a war in Iran than the brave souls in Global Network. Bye bye for now, we'll be tracking General Childton and his friends from Times Square until our next thrilling dispatch. Maybe it's time to visit Louisiana.